greater ASEAN region? Uh, first, thanks for having me. Of course, uh, sir. Well, last year, as you said, the industry grew 14.3%. Mm -hmm. And the way I see it, uh, that will continue since the government is actually planning to invest 5% of its GDP uh, into constructions, uh, especially infrastructure. As you know, many investors are complaining about infrastructure. Just an example, uh, if you want to land in our airport, uh, when you're about to land, the pilot will say, sorry folks, you have to wait for 30 minutes yes. because there are like 12, 20 mm -hmm. planes ahead of us. So it's obvious that this country needs infrastructure, especially if you're promoting tourism and, and, and more so, no? so. Because last year, I believe that's probably 8 million tourists visited the country. Mm -hmm. And we have such a small airport and we need more. Okay. And I think the government is trying to address that. All right. Um, now, you don't, you don't think with elections looming, uh, with the new administration coming in, that this might change? When I look at the, uh, uh, what they call this, uh, desire of, of the poor uh, candidates, mm -hmm. they all said that they would invest on infrastructure. Nobody said that they would not. Okay, so now the growth in material sales, um, of course, was boosted in a, a, by, by public works. What about the demand coming from the private sector? Do you see this demand healthily growing steadily as well? When you look at uh, construction added value for last year, it's like a total of 1.5 billion, 1.2 billion, 1.2 trillion came from the private sector. Okay. Now, are you looking at a potential IT, IPO anytime soon? No, one of your uh, competitors is looking at one of the biggest possible IPOs in Philippine history. Is this in, the, in your future as well? Uh, for holes in Philippines, not, not in our radar screen at the moment. So, talagang categorical no? Uh, <laughs> right now, we're busy looking mm -hmm. at how we will serve the market. Mm -hmm. uh, as the market has grown um, uh, to double digits in the last couple of years. Okay. Now, Holcim is, of course, one of the biggest uh, cement companies in the world. Now, sustainability, corporate citizenship are big buzzwords right now. What uh, with climate change and natural disasters, even earthquakes looming, um, how does Holcim fit into all of this? I, I think, uh, as far as Holcim is concerned, money is to bring CO2 emission by 30 uh, percent. In your production. Years ago, in our production, mm -hmm. by using alternative raw material and fuels. Uh, we're actually just uh, a couple of weeks ago, put into the market one day concrete. It's actually helping our public works to actually make it faster to repair our roads, especially in EDSA. These that are the ones where they, uh, they uh, just take overnight to dry, quick yes, drying. Yes, so mm -hmm. it's uh, actually it's uh, different products. Uh, the, the fastest one, we have eight hours from eight. You close at 10, you open at six. So that's, that's the speed crit. And I hope that the country would benefit from this technology so that we don't suffer traffic uh, and so on, <laughs> bottleneck uh, along EDSA. A big, big yes to that. Thank you very much for joining thank us again, so. Mr. Zahagun. Oh,